Ethical hackers, isn't that an oxymoron? So we talked a little bit about all the different attackers and the hacker's methodology at this point. So now we want to talk about the good guys, the ethical hackers for a moment. They do a lot of the same things and in fact sometimes they even use some of the same tools. So when we look at their methodology, it's going to look very similar. The big difference is we have a step at the beginning and a step at the end for ethical hackers. So ethical hackers follow a similar methodology, but there's a couple of key differences. One is they get permission. The second is everything they do is reversible. They're not trying to do harm to the network. The goal here is to look at the organization and identify the weaknesses, not to hurt the organization. So when we look at the hacker's methodology, we had six steps. Now when we put in the ethical hacker's methodology, we're going to add a step at the beginning and a step at the end. The first step we're going to add is approval. We're going to get permission before we do anything. Now, the reason why this is really important is, again, we've talked about this before, but hacking is illegal. You cannot hack anybody's networks. You have to have written permission from the network owner or own the network yourself. So an ethical hacker will always have a written document, and we like to affectionately call this the get out of jail free letter. Ethical hackers are employed or contracted by the organizations they hack. They are brought in and they are asked to hack those networks. You have to have that letter in writing to make sure you don't get in trouble. Remember, hacking is a felony in the United States, so you have to make sure you have that get out of jail free letter. And I can't stress this enough, always, always, always have it in writing. It, the writing should tell you exactly what it is you're allowed to hack and what the scope is. For instance, if I'm going after Microsoft, maybe they only want me to go after their Hotmail servers. They don't want me to go after everything. That would be in that get out of jail free letter. Same thing with any organization you go after. You have to have it very clearly scoped so you know what is and what is not in bounds for the assessment. So after we get permission, we go through the six standard steps of the hacker's methodology. So the last step and most important step is reporting. Reporting is going to be that list of all the things that you found during your penetration testing. You're going to document things like how you got in, what the weaknesses were, and how you recommend that they fix them. One of the most important things you should do is provide a prioritized list. So just because you found 15 or 20 different ways of getting in, you need to tell them that this is the most important way. Fix this first because this is a vulnerability I found on 200 of your machines, whereas the other one I might have only found it on one. Now, they're going to want to fix everything eventually, but it helps them when they're trying to figure out where should they spend their money quickest and first to get the most bang for their buck. And remember, your report should be clear, concise, and most importantly, be useful.